All right, guys, welcome back. We are looking at some more stuff on vector combinations and span, and we're still dealing with the same type of video or the same type of problem that we had in the last video. Basically, the last video, um, we looked at this first question here, is W a linear combination of U and V? Now, hopefully you watched this video. If not, just go back and check it. Um, but in this video, we want to be solving for the second question. We're gonna use a different set of vectors here, but I wanna show you that it's exactly the same process as we did for this first one. Um, so basically, let's uh, let's define some vectors here that we're going to be working with. Uh, let's say that we've got vector u. Um, this is gonna be two, one. We're gonna have vector v, and this is going to be negative four, negative two. And then let's have this other vector here, w, and we'll call this guy um, 8, 4. All right, so the question that we want to answer in this video is, is w in the span of u and v? Now, if the span of a set of vectors is just the set of all linear combinations of those vectors. So basically what this is saying is, is W a linear combination of these? Because the span is the set of all linear combinations and if W is in the span, then W is one of those linear combinations. All right, so this is exactly the same as the last time. So uh, basically we need to get some expression where we have a scalar times U plus some other scalar times V is equal to W. And if this is true, then this is satisfied and then that means that W is a linear combination of these. Um, if you don't like using C1s and C2s with subscripts, you can also just write this as X, uh, not X, Y, um, X times U plus uh, like Y times V. Really, you can pick any letters that you're comfortable with working here because these just represent scalars like that. All right, so what we wanna do is we basically, like in the last video, we uh, we set this to the right-hand side of the augmented matrix, the furthest right column, whatever is in this, uh, this blank here. And then whatever these vectors are, we set to all of the other columns of the, the left-hand side of the augmented matrix. So if we go and, uh, if we go and set this up, basically we start out um, with the shape of the augmented matrix here. Let's, we're gonna have a column for U, we're gonna have a column for V, we're gonna have a little divider thing, and then we're gonna have a column for W. So U was two, one, uh, V is negative four, negative two, and W is eight, four. All right, so what we wanna do is we just wanna get this down into reduced row echelon form. Um, so we wanna apply some elementary row operations. And the first one that is easiest here is we wanna get this to a one. So we'll go um, row one divided by two. All right, so we'll just get one, negative two, and four. And then here, row two is unaffected by that, so we still have one, negative two, and four. All right, the next thing we wanna do is wanna get this to a zero, so we'll do one more operation here. We'll just do row two minus row one. So row one is going to be unaffected by this, so we get one, negative two, four, and then here we have one minus one is zero, negative two minus negative two is zero, and four minus four is zero. All right, so that's as far as we can go with this. And what this really means is this is just telling us, this is representing to us a system of linear equations. Um, basically, it's like if we were using the letters here, x and y, this is the system of linear equations. It's just one x minus two y is equal to four, and then it's also saying that zero x minus zero y is equal to zero. So we can just rearrange this a little bit to write this as x is equal to four plus two y. And then if we say, if we have an expression for x, then we also just wanna write an expression for y, and y basically is just equal to y, it's equal to itself. So really what we have here is an expression where we have this variable x um, or this, this, yeah, this, this number x is depends on y. Um, so if we go back and fill out this expression that we had over here, well, for x, we have um, x is equal to 4 plus 2y times the vector u plus y times the vector v should be equal to the vector w. What we can do is we can say that this is four plus two y um, times the actual vector, which we know, and u is two one uh, plus 
y times the vector v, which was negative 4, negative 2, is equal to w, which was 8, 4. All right, so what I did here is I did draw these. Um, so we have vector u, which is 2, 1. We have vector v, which is negative 4, negative 2. And we have w, which is 8, 4. And you can see when we draw them all in standard position that they definitely are all parallel to each other. And uh, yeah, there, there will be more than one combination of u and v that we can add together to get w if we think about all the different possible scaled up and scaled down versions of that. And that's really evident here when we have this expression because y can be absolutely any number that we want and this expression should work. Um, so if we go ahead and try that, um, let's, pick, let's pick an easy one to begin with. Let's pick y equals zero. So for y, let's write that a little bit nicer. For y equals zero, well, this, is, this little term here is going to go to 0, so we're just going to have 4 times 2 times 1, I'm oh, sorry, 4 times a vector to 1, plus this will be 0, so basically this goes all goes to 0, so negative 4, negative 2, and is that going to be equal to 8, 4? That's a big question. Well, 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. So yeah, we get 8, 4 is equal to this vector 8, 4, because that's all 0. So that checks out. So that's just one example of one possible combination and that satisfies this. Let's do a couple more. Um, let's pick for y equal to 1. So we plug in y is equal to 1 here. We're going to get 2 times 1. That's 2 plus 4 is 6. So we're going to get 6 times that vector 2, 1 um, plus one times this vector negative four negative two and that's all going to be equal to eight four when we go to expand that out we get um, basically six times two is twelve the vector we get twelve six uh, plus the vector here which is negative four negative two and is that all going to be equal to eight four the big question so twelve minus four Yep, that's 8, and 6 minus 2, that is 4, and yeah, there we go. We get that 8, 4, and uh, yeah, smiley faces all around, we're super happy. Now when we think about really, we can even plot these, like um, when we get to this step here, we get this vector 8, 4, plus this 0 vector should be equal to 8, 4. Well, the vector 8, 4, if we want to draw it on, basically in standard position goes like that. That's the vector 8, 4, and if you add the 0 vector to it, then we get w. Um, another example here is 12, 6. So if we come out here to 12, so that's 12, and that was 6 up there, so it's like there. So that's 12, 6, and then if we add in this other vector, negative 4, negative 2, we're going to go back 4 and down 2. You're right, tip to tail, vector addition, that's going to bring us back down to W. Um, so again, that's just kind of highlighting that, yeah, that's that's really what we're talking about here, is just vector addition. When we're doing linear combinations of vectors, we're just adding vectors together. And these, um, when we're doing all these different combinations, all the possible combinations of uh, these vectors, uh, the vector addition of U and V are basically the set of all linear combinations of these vectors is the span, and W is just in that span. All right, so anyways, let's do one last just thing here, just confirming with numbers, just because we can. Um, let's pick for like y equals, um, you know what, let's use orange still, I guess. Um, let's just say like y equals negative three. Just just to throw one more in there and we'll, we'll hopefully get the point. So if we have negative three, so two times negative three is six, that's negative six plus four, that's gonna be negative two times that vector to one um, plus negative three times negative four, that vector negative four, negative two, and that should hopefully all be equal to positive eight, positive four. All right, if we do this, we get negative four, negative two, and then we get plus this other vector with some scalar multiplication of vectors here we get negative no negative three times negative four that's positive twelve negative three times negative two that's positive six all right looking promising 
and a negative 4 plus 12, yeah, that's 8. And negative 2 plus 6, woo, 4. All right, so that checks out. So that also works. Basically, you can put in absolutely any number you can imagine there, and, uh, and you're going to get that this is true because that's the general sense, and these were just some examples to highlight it. Um, again, you can do, you can visually think about this if we're dealing with vectors in, you know, an R2 like this one is. Um, negative 4, negative 2. That's basically going to come out. I should use a straight line tool. Negative 4, negative 2. That's that vector right there. And then if we add 12, 6, we're basically going to go 12 units over and 6 units up. And that takes us right to W. So hopefully these examples just really help show you visually like what linear combinations are and the fact that the span is you know, like this entire parallel, this line basically, which is possible in R2. Um, it's also possible for two vectors to span all of R2, um, but we'll get to that in a couple of videos. Basically, like in R2, you can have a span that is a line or a span that's a whole space. Um, like in, for example, in R3, you could also have two vectors or a set of vectors spanning basically a line, a plane, or the whole 3D space. But we'll get to that in a couple of videos. Um, and, and the reason I'm doing this in R2 is so you can see that basically we can we can have vectors like four or five dimensional vectors or ten dimensional vectors it doesn't matter and uh, and have linear combinations of them and spans and, and right linear combinations um, but it, it's it, you can't draw those ones so the the principles still apply it doesn't matter how many you know how many dimensions we're working in as long as each vector is all in the same dimension um, but yeah there you go hopefully that helps. And uh, this was an example, again, just to remind you, this is an example that had infinite solutions, and that's why we get this like um, this, this general kind of variable showing up in here that we can plug in any number that we want for any number of solutions. That's a little bit different than the previous example where we had a single solution. And I just wanted to highlight kind of two different examples where you might have that. The one place where you uh, where you will find no solution and then these statements won't be true is if you were asked to basically find like a vector, let's say like negative uh, one and three, let's go up there. Um, let's just call this vector, um, I don't know, A. And this vector is, we can write that as negative one, and three. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna write that over here where we can see it a little bit better. A is equal to negative one, three. Um, there is no combination of u and v that we could possibly get to come out here, right? Because we can only add them, the combinations of them to get in that line. And if you solved this augmented matrix the exact same way, you'd find that you have a row of zeros and then some number over here, and that would basically mean there's no solution. So hopefully that kind of clears this up. Um, in the next video, we're just gonna basically solve this kind of one more time, but just kind of address this last question here where we wanna write something as a linear combination of something, but we've already been doing that a lot. Um, but yeah, join me in the next video, and we will just do a little bit more practice with this stuff.